So let's begin by welcoming welcoming you both tonight to our webinar. Webinar. We're so glad to have you here this evening. I am your host, Melissa Knowles. I am a Active Classroom Certified Facilitator, among many other things. Maybe I'll be even helping write some of your Nebraska maps. That will be awesome. <laughs> and our presenter here tonight is Dr. Aaron Willis. He is the Chief Learning Officer for Social Studies School Service. He has worked in interactive and digital education for more than two decades. And we're so excited with these updates as we stay, um, as we bring things that you guys in your school districts want and need and to make it easier for you. His primary field of interest is brain-based imaging, hands-on learning, evidence-based reading and writing strategies, all those things we need more of in our classrooms. And he oversees Active Classroom and Nystrom World. Uh, he is based in Los Angeles with his convertible and his son. I'm jealous. He travels frequently working with teachers. I've traveled and trained with him. He is a joy. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Dr. Willis, to share with us all the new things that are coming for Active Classroom. All right. Well, thank you, Melissa, very much. And uh, just a, a nod to... Uh, uh, to Nebraska. It's probably the other part of the state, but I'm a big fan of birding, and uh, you have your sandhill uh, crane migration is uh, either happening now or soon, so I'd love to get over there and see that one day. Have you ever had a chance to see that, Andrea? Yeah, it's real cool. It's about uh, maybe two and a half hours away from Omaha, further west in the state, mm -hmm. um, but it's an awesome thing to see for sure. Okay, well, that's on my to-do list uh, one day. Today, though, we're going to talk about Google Classroom and its integration with Active Classroom. And it's, this is really going to be a little bit about the evolution of how we're uh, developing that. Uh, so I'm going to start off by sharing a couple of videos with you. Uh, one, the current help video that we have that describes how we connect Google Classroom to Active Classroom. And then I'll do a new one, which is what you're going to see, all the functionality that you're going to have when you come back to school uh, in the fall. So uh, that's, and then I'll, then I'll do that step by step and walk you through that. So you'll have a really good sense today of how to link Google Classroom uh, with Active Classroom. And we can talk about some of the ways uh, that that might work for you. So let's see, I go ahead here and share my screen. And um, okay, I'm going to... Wait a second. It usually, let me stop sharing and start again. I need to make sure that it's gonna, yep, it's gonna share the sound. Okay, so currently this is how, this is a short uh, minute and 14 second video on how to integrate uh, Google Classroom with Active Classroom. It's easy to integrate Active Classroom with Google Classroom. Begin in Active Classroom by selecting an activity to assign. Set the due date, assess your students, and submit. Use the link that you get when you submit to copy and paste into Google Classroom in order to create the assignment. Add your instructions. The students will get an email that they can click on that will take them into Google Classroom directly to the class where the assignment is. Here's what that class looks like. The students click on the assignment, it takes them in, they review the instructions. In this case, they need to pay attention to log in with Google on the next screen. Don't enter any credentials here, but log in with Google at the bottom. It'll automatically log them in. They go into their activity and they can submit that for your review. All grading happens in Active Classroom. So when you're ready to grade student work, go into Assignments and Grades, select Grade Assignment, and you'll be able to grade any of the students. Once you're in the gradebook, you can export those grades for use. Okay, so that's the, the quick way of uh, what we currently have in place. So basically, you create assignments in Active Classroom, but you can copy the links to those assignments into your Google Classroom, and the students can launch them from Google Classroom. But what we're adding right now, and this is the next video I'm going to show you, 
is a way to actually sync up the two systems. So if you have students and classes in Google Classroom, Active Classroom will learn and, and, get, and absorb all of those students in classes. Uh, and when you make the assignment in Active Classroom, uh, it'll automatically go back and be an assignment in Google Classroom. And when you grade it in Active Classroom, the grades will go back to Google Classroom. So it's really a much tighter integration. And um, let's see a quick video of that. And then I'm gonna walk you through a uh, step-by-step how that works. So you'll have a real uh, uh, nuanced understanding of it. To sync your Google Classroom with Active Classroom, set up your Google Classroom classes and students, then go to Active Classroom, click on your profile, and scroll to the bottom of the page. There you'll find a link to connect your Active Classroom to Google Classroom. Select that link, then it'll ask you to select your Google account, and then it will ask you to grant six different permissions. Please allow all of these permissions in order to sync your Google Classroom with Active Classroom. Once done, it will give you a summary of what you've agreed to, review that, and allow the connection between Google Classroom and Active Classroom. Then go back to your profile page, scroll to the bottom, and synchronize your Google Classroom account with Active Classroom. This will bring over your classes and students that are already established in Google Classroom. We can go here to our Manage Students tab to see that the classes we had in our Google Classroom are now here in our Active Classroom. Moreover, the student that we had in this one class is now in Active Classroom and can be assi receive assignments. Once your accounts are connected, any assignments that you make in Active Classroom will be loaded back into Google Classroom. And any grades that you publish in Active Classroom will be pushed back to Google Classroom and appear in the grade section there. OK, awesome. So that's simple enough. Uh, let's now take a minute. And uh, first, before I go in, I'll ask if there's any uh, questions. And then my intention is to actually walk through and to uh, look at, you know, uh, follow the steps that I just identified so we can see it in real time. And we'll go through and we'll actually assign something to a student, grade the student work, and then see how that comes back into Google Classroom. So any questions so far? I have a question. This is Montre uh, from Hi, Houston. Montre, welcome. My question is around, did I, did I understand that there will be a button, a button that automatically syncs the two in the second? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. So, we have another question. Oh, sorry. Were you, were you finishing answering Montre's question? No, no, go on. Um, Suzanne wants to know if Active Classroom automatically updates if you get new students added to your Google Classroom. It doesn't automatically, but we use that sync. If we've added new students, and there's, uh, then we would go back to our profile, and we would just hit that synchronize button. Uh, so it should be able to bring in and any changes that have been made in your Google Classroom world, as long as you go into Active Classroom and synchronize, uh, that should bring in any new students. Or if you created a new class, that should bring that in as well. So uh, using the synchronization feature does allow you to bring things up to speed. Uh, it'll be automatically synced at night for most regular procedures like the, the grading and the students and the assignments. And well, the assignments happen in real time, uh, but um, you, can all, you always have that manual button to be able to synchronize as well. Uh, now, Andrea, I don't know uh, uh, if we were planning to set up rostering with your district. Uh, that's, we usually use a one roster standard and that's where we get all the student information and the classes and all of that comes in directly in a nightly feed. 
But if you guys are all using Google Classroom and you already have all your students loaded and all your classes logo to, loaded into Google Classroom, we can completely bypass that need to have the whole rostering thing because basically we'll just use Google Classroom to, to roster your students. So that's an option that'll be open to you. Great. I don't know the answer to that question. Um, our curriculum specialists will have that answer, but I'll definitely um, pass that information along to her because we do, our systems already um, exist in Google Classroom to do the rostering and that sort of thing in Google Classroom. So I'll make sure she knows that. Awesome. And, and we'll, our tech people will reach out as well to clarify that. Okay, okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm in Active Classroom and I'm going to show you, I'm going to delete the classes that I have in Active Classroom right now so that uh, we can then sync, sync them up and see that they come from Google Classroom. So right now in my Active Classroom account, I have no students and no classes. And um, what I want to do, though, is I need to make a connection between my account before I can get the information from Google. I need to go to my uh, profile so I can click on the, my, my avatar up here, my name, and I can go down here and, um, oh, it looks like I hadn't previously disconnected it. So let me, uh, so now we're disconnected and uh, go down here. So uh, this is what it'll look like. I'm kind of come down here for the first time. I'm going to connect. To my uh, account. Here's what we saw before. It gives us any choices that I have in my Google accounts. And so I'm going to select this one. Now it's going to, uh, we're just waiting for this verification. So it'll, you'll skip that step. But here's what we're going to see now. Uh, we're going to be asked to accept these six different permissions or to grant these six different permissions so that Active Classroom can talk to Google Classroom and can share data with Google Classroom. So once we've accepted all six of those, it lists what we're doing here. We're going to be sharing coursework and grades, email addresses of, of, of students, class rosters. Uh, we've accepted all of that. And now we're going to allow that. And it says, great, the Google Classroom account has been linked. OK, it's linked. But let's just double check again here. I'm going to go to my manage uh, students and classes. I still don't have any classes or students. But now what I can do is I can go to my profile and scroll to the bottom of the page. And now I have this, now that it's been linked, I have this synchronize your Google Classroom data. So I'm gonna click on that. It gives me this little warning because we need you to know that Google Classroom only deals with grades on a numeric scale of zero to a hundred. Whereas Active Classroom, we allow you to do letter grades or percentages or all sorts of different things, but everything's gonna be converted when it goes back into uh, Google Classroom. So that's why we come up with that little uh, note there. Now let's go back and look at our um, manage students area and look at this. So those classes came in, they're loaded in, and let's see if I remember correctly in my Active Classroom Fellows, I have the student here who's there ready to receive assignments. So just by uh, accepting the permissions, making the connection to Google Classroom, and then uh, doing the synchronization, it brought in all of the classes. And I just had the one student, but it'll bring in any of your students, and they'll be in those particular classes. So let's go ahead and make an assignment in Active Classroom uh, to that student so we can see how that works. And I'm going to go here to my activity search. And let's see, I want to find something. I like these power basics because I know they have quick assessments and I can be uh, successful. So here is um, uh, a power basics unit on uh, the rise of dictators in Europe. This is a reading with short assessment uh, questions. I go to assign it and uh, we don't have to assign the whole thing. I'm just going to assign one reading on Italy and Mussolini to the student. I'm going to give it a due date of this Saturday and an unlock date of today. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to uh, assign it to my Active Classroom Fellows course. And I'll put in a note here. Here's where we put in the instructions. If 
So I'm going to say here are the instructions in Active Classroom. I scroll to the bottom. I save this assignment. And it should give us a, um, a little green logo. And there it says, great, well done, your assignment's been saved. Instead of having to copy and paste this assignment link back into Google Classroom, it's going to do that automatically for me. So now I close this out here and I um, have this assignment. Let me go and I think I have my student account is over here. And if I reload the student account, I see as a student that I now have this assignment from my teacher. But let's just double check something else. Let's double check to see if that assignment went back to Google Classroom. So I'm gonna go back here to my Google Classroom. I think we assigned it to the Active Classroom Fellows course. And lo and behold, here's a new assignment. If I click on this, let's see, Power uh, Basics, The Rise of Dictators in Europe. And if I go to, I think it's the instructions, here are the instructions in AC. So that's, those are the instructions that I put in, remember, over there into that field. And then if I want to launch it, I'll be able to launch it. Now, I'm in a teacher mode here, so I'm not going to launch it just yet. But you'll, the students, of course, will have the same thing. They'll have the instructions and the ability to launch it, and it'll take them uh, right over into the course. In fact, let's see. If I click on that, it takes me from my Google Classroom right into the specific reading here in Active Classroom. So it's taken me uh, exactly where I wanted to be. But let's go and complete the activity as a student so that we can show how the grading works. So as a student, I can go in here and I can click on this new activity that I was assigned. Those instructions are popping up here, the same thing that I typed into the instructions box previously. I have to read these three or four paragraphs here on Italy and Mussolini and a little on foreign policy. And how else could the United Nations get a nation to obey its orders? Um, they can use sanctions. Okay, so we've got an answer there. Um, and then we've got some multiple choice answers here. So I'll go through. And let's see, I think they were in Ethiopia and the League of Nations, war crime trials. And so I just selected things. So now as the student, I've completed this activity. I'm gonna turn it in as a student, confirm that I'm ready to turn it in and it'll mark up exactly uh, when it was turned in. So I turned it in on April 15th at 3.21 p.m. It's going to my local time. And as the student, I can still see the answers that are here, but I cannot change them because I've turned this in already. Okay, so let's go now back to our teacher account that I have here in another window. And here's my teacher account. And I'm gonna go to my main page and it's gonna give me a notice under recent activity that all the students have completed the rise of dictators in Europe. So I'm gonna go in there, I can just click on this. It takes me right into the grading interface. Okay, don't tell anybody, they might revoke my doctorate. I only got two out of six here, uh, but let's see. I think, uh, oh, I didn't even, oh, this one I didn't get credit for yet. So I'm gonna change that and as a teacher, I'm gonna increase the value of that one to two since it was a short answer. And okay, so I got a couple wrong. I'll have to live with that. And uh, so we've got four out of seven. So we can leave it like that, or I can change it into a grade, or I can change it into a percentage. But when it goes back into Google Classroom, it's going to do a calculation and figure out what percentage this is out of 100. Okay. Now it is graded, but you won't see it in Google Classroom until you publish the grades. And that's true for everything in Active Classroom. You have to publish the grades for students to see them. And this allows you to work with, on grading a few students one night and maybe the next batch of students the next night, but they don't see the answers uh, and their grades until you release them to everybody at the same time. Or you can do it sequentially, but we give you that more granular control. So I go to my grade book now. I find, here's that lesson. And I just click on this little red button here 
that says publish grades. Okay, and it says my grades were successfully published. And so that means that the student can now go back and see their grade. So I'm gonna show you the student, what it looks like for the student in Active Classroom. And let's see here. I should be able to go to my assignments and grades here. And I see that it's done. And I don't know why that. There was a pop-up on your teacher account that said, are you sure you want to publish these grades? I think. It oh, you know what? And the whole little video uh, ticker tape was uh, right up there. So uh, maybe that didn't happen. Okay, let me go back to my teacher account. Thanks for telling me that, Melissa. Let me go back over to my teacher account and okay yeah it's not published publish grades click okay okay it just took a minute now that's green okay good and then as a student I can now go through here and I can reload this page and it shows that I've got four out of seven and if I wanted to see, well, how, what did I get right and what did I get wrong? I can go in and I can see that here in Active Classroom. Okay, that said, let's see what happened over in Google Classroom. So we're gonna go back over to Google Classroom and we'll go back here to student work. So here's the student work for this. And it turned that into 57.14 out of 100. That was the equivalent of four out of seven. So you, that's, uh, that, that's how it uh, appears. And uh, the work is graded there. And uh, you can see that if you wanna go back to the assignment itself, the student can go in, uh, but then you can uh, mark this off as graded within your Google Classroom interface. So what we were able to demonstrate is the way to sync our accounts, to bring over uh, the classes, to bring over the students. Uh, that did not appear at all in Active Classroom, then to make an assignment uh, to the students in Active Classroom for the student to complete that in Active Classroom. And once again, this is an important thing. You're using Google Classroom as your sort of master organizing tool, but still the work that students are gonna do is gonna happen in Active Classroom. They'll just get a link to go over to it. And if they're signed in, it should take them right in from their Google account or it takes them to the sign-in page and they just say sign in with Google. They shouldn't have to present any credentials again. And then they go in, they complete the activity in Active Classroom. The teacher grades it in Active Classroom, but then the grade does go back to uh, Google Classroom automatically. And we saw that happening in real time. So that's pretty much how it works. And uh, it'll make it really convenient in terms of both managing students and, um, and assignments. We've got some good questions. Are you ready? I'm ready, bring them on. Right. So I'm gonna go a little out of order just because this particular one relates to what you just did. Will it give correct answers for the incorrect responses so they can learn from their errors for what they missed? Right, so um, you get that nuance in Active Classroom and all they're gonna see in, um, uh, Google Classroom is either their final grade or they can link back over to see how they did, you know, their, how things were in Active Classroom. But if you want students really to understand um, what happened, then let's go over here to the student area. And remember, if I launch it, if I'm looking at this in Active Classroom, it actually brings up and you can have, you could have put in feedback here for the whole lesson. And then you can put in feedback on each individual one, like, oh, this was a great short answer, whatever. So the students can see that. You also, when you're making the assignment in Active Classroom, you can choose to allow students to redo the assignment on their own and to see the answers uh, after they've submitted it. So you can treat any activity or lesson as a formative assessment and basically just let the students do it over and over again until they get everything right or until they get sick of it, whichever comes first. Um, or you can set it up as more summative where they submit it. Once they submit it, they can't do anything to it. And, um, and in, you can give them another chance to try it over once you're grading it, 
but then you have more control over um, granting them those extra attempts. Well, the next question is, this is just a clarification question. So using Active Classroom with Google Classroom, she wanted to make sure that it's not gonna change anything else in Google Classroom or Active Classroom, just adds the assignments, it updates the students and grades. It doesn't change anything else in either format. It's certainly not supposed to. And, uh, and uh, Google is, works really closely with us to make sure that the just exact right permissions are being uh, put in there. So you're acknowledging when you go through those six permissions. And um, in fact, something that I didn't show you here is in order for the students to see the grades in their account coming from Active Classroom to Google Classroom, I think the students might need to go into their profile as well and agree that, um, that it can go in to give permission to app for Active Classroom to talk to Google Classroom. Sorry, I missed that part. That's good. We have another question that I'm gonna learn because I'm not familiar with this. Can Active Class, does, does the Active Classroom interface work well with Google Read and Write? So good question. I don't know. I've never used Google Read and Write. Um, tell me a little bit more about that. I'm not sure whose question that was, but. Uh... Suzanne, feel free to unmute if you want to. Hello. Um, Hi. If you have not discovered Google Read and Write, I should be a poster child. <laughs> <laughs> no okay. poster child. I used it for the first time two years ago in a district which had permissions for all of their students to have Google Read and Write. They um, they have a larger budget than the current mm -hmm. system I'm working in. But we, I'm a special education teacher, so we've recently accepted Google Read and Write platform for many, if not most, of our special education students. It is an incredible platform that um, with personal Google users, I believe it's free, but when it, you're in a system or mm -hmm. using it for students, there are some extra provisions in place. So I, I think it's a paid service, but sure. it provides prediction, uh, definition, both pictorial definitions um, and written definitions, a line guide, an opportunity to be read to, a translation option. Um, if anyone's familiar with Cami or some of the other platforms, it basically takes all of what those other platforms do, and it's really a transformative experience. So I'm going to play around with it, and I will let you know because I do have a number of students who use Google um, read and write. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of a novice with active classroom and I was not <laughs> slated to be a social studies teacher this year, but then um, they, uh, oh, things that changed never happened, in the year Suzanne. of I've COVID. never heard of that happening before. <laughs> so at the end of last year, I was a social studies teacher, but they said, oh, we won't have you teaching social studies. Don't go to the active classroom trainings. Although I knew better. I said, I'd really like to go to the training. Which <laughs> district I are you in, Suzanne? Uh, Griffin Spaulding. Griffin Spaulding in Georgia. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah, yeah, in Georgia, right? Oh, yes, yeah. and I'm lovely. moving on to high school next year, so I don't know if we have it in the high school, but I love Active Classroom, um, but I've been working with our social studies. Yeah, I, I have four content areas and seven different classes. I'm co-teach, co-lab, and resource, so I've been kind of like mind blown this year, um, but you have just transformed my life with Active Classroom and Google Classroom and you know, informing it. So thank you so much. Um, well, but let, if, let Tony know that you have to have, uh, you have to have it at the high school too. And uh, I, I <laughs> they don't really listen to me. I, I, I wash bottles in the back, which is fine, but I will give my <laughs> two cents. Um, okay. But yeah, Tony's Suzanne, great. I, I did want to show you though. So I don't, there's a lot of Google uh, features and functions that need to be um, integrated separately. Like uh, we've had requests to integrate Google Drive where students can store their files. And, and I know mm. we're working on that and that's on mm -hmm. our to-do list, but that's not part of this integration. Okay. I, I do know though, I am in a student account right now and I want you to be aware that in Active Classroom, we also, we do have the read aloud toolbar that you can launch right. here. And that, um, so it can, 
you know, read to me from the beginning. And Mussolini. Well, and it's interesting because I think your icons are um, very similar. So if you take all of your icons that you have, and this may be something to roll out with the software. My husband used to be software implementation. So we can talk offline too, because it looks like everything you offer is what uh, Google Read and Write offers as well, um, in addition to some other features. So um, I think it would be great if they, you know, synced up completely because there's a highlighting feature. Um, do you have sure. highlighting? Here's our features? translate feature. Okay. So I can translate it into 30 different languages and then it right. can read to me. I think it's translating to Spanish now. Do you have highlighter? Yes. Um, we we have a highlighter as well. It's not part of this toolbar, uh, but we so we have our little highlighter here. Okay. So if I wanted to, if I thought this was like a main idea, I mm -hmm. can click on my highlighter and I can say, oh, this is a main idea. This is supporting right. evidence. We also have the ability when you're creating your assignment to customize what markers you want. So if you wanted to create a blue marker that's vocabulary I don't understand you can do that as well. So uh, here's how we're able to highlight that. I could add a, a note to it. And then once I save it, it goes in over here. And then a teacher can go through and they can view all the student work and they can flip through student by student and look at how each student has marked up or annotated their um, work. And then the teacher can double click on that annotation and give them a response even if they wanted to oh no, this isn't really the main idea, try it again, or whatever feedback you might wanna offer. Uh, there also are things like what you were saying before, uh, the picture dictionary here, um, you know, I guess that helps, I don't know, I've never been a, a big fan of that one, but a lot of the same uh, functionality that you just mentioned. And That's a word great. dictionary, which is read to them, uh, a text dictionary. Right, right this right. one here, so government, well, forgive me because I, I'm a novice. I didn't want to speak very much um, because I know others have already gone through most of the other trainings, but I wanted to grab this training and try to catch up. <laughs> nice, or your kids nice. do that settings with offers. You can change the highlighting color. So if students are particularly, you know, they'll focus more on different colors. You can, you can adjust the colors. There's a lot mm -hmm. of things in the settings. If you get a chance to play around with it, I think, I think you'll really enjoy that for your kids. That's great. And do try to play around with Google Read and Write and see some of, it'd be interesting to see some of the differences. Oh, one of, yeah, absolutely. One I'm of the things, now. one of the things that Google Read and Write does with their highlighting feature, which I like is um, you can designate the colors. I like how you um, can choose what the designation is on Active Classroom. Does it collect them by color? Uh, no, it, it, it'll put them in over here according to just, I think, sequentially where they are on the page, and then you can jump around to them. Like, for example, if you were doing ELA and you wanted them to do all of the verbs in blue, all of the nouns in green, or all of the, um, it does a, it has a highlighting circle, looks like a recycling circle, and it will pull, grab all of those and create a vocabulary list with the definitions of those terms. <laughs> and so oh, that's nice. a really okay. cool feature. So work on that one. I'm thinking, um, I'm also a pastor, so I think I'd like to officiate the marriage between active classroom Yay, and Google Suzanne, Read and we'll Write. Bring you on board. There, there's a lot of good features in both. And I just, I love when things inform each other. So I didn't want to, I just appreciate getting to share with you all. So thank you. Cool. Okay, uh, Melissa, any other questions on, to on topic or off topic? <laughs> no, I think we're good uh, as far as what's in the chat. It okay. may have well, we'll, we'll open it up at this point. Uh, Suzanne, Andrea, Montre, if you guys have any additional questions, uh, Melissa and I are here at your service. Suzanne, hi, it's Montre from Houston. Quick question, I've used uh, or have seen uh, it in use, let me put it like that, the, the Google read and write. Am I remembering correctly? I think that it does voice voice to text. So it like, does. Okay, that's what I thought. I thought it, it did. It does. 
voice to text um it, it lets you record like if you with special education if you're doing progress monitoring and are trying to get their reading rate you can assign them a passage and it will record them so then you can listen to it later so then you have additional data to compare and one of the things i did this year was listened to something that was I followed my sixth graders to seventh grade and they got to see some of their progress and it was just, it was fantastic. Um, so there's just a lot in there. That's really, really good. Oh, and the other thing, do you all have a line guide in yours where it has the line, the shaded line? That's one thing that has really been, especially for our um, SLD um, and um, legally blind students, mm -hmm. you know, the magnifier is great, but having that line guide and it's just shaded. So what they're reading is really bold and it's awesome. So we have, you saw that when it does read, you've got, um, Italy and you know, right. it does highlight it with the colors there and you right. can go into the settings here and you can change, uh, the, the speed of the voice, you know, what colors it, it is and, uh, uh, how some of those um, things are affected. And here's a sample of all the translations. So I have it set up as English to Spanish now, but I could put it into Hindi or Hmong or Japanese wow. or Korean. So well, maybe um, uh, Andrea Mantra and I um, can be your deployed staff since she's in Texas and I'm in Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we've got good coverage here, in the, and Andrea's up in Nebraska. We got good okay. So Andrea's Nebraska, there. Mantra is Texas. I'm Georgia, mm -hmm. and I'm from California. So ah, oh, okay, great. That's Suzanne, awesome. what part of California from? Well, I claimed the whole state. Um, I was born and raised in the city of Orange in Orange County, and my father retired to Roseville. So I married the city into the of South. Orange is so adorable it's yes. they really redone the down old downtown there and i oh. guess with chapman college there they really uh you know put in a lot and, to it wow and that's my what alma mater that is that's my alma mater i went to chat i was at chapman when it went from chapman college to chapman university so all right that's all right. awesome and look at montre's got her golden gate bridge background on there uh -huh. excellent all right <laughs> I appreciate the ease of the synchronization. So I know sometimes the teachers, they don't want to do a lot of clicks. Um, they kind of want things to be a little easy. I think that this is a big win. That's why my question was around, does, does that one button kind of do it all for you? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and as you showed us, it did. And I'm telling you, they, they don't necessarily want to do a lot of clicks. So if you have something that's kind of easy, quick, I can pull it all together. I don't have to get rid of the Google piece, the Google classrooms, because I love it, right? I don't have to let mm -hmm. go of that. Mm -hmm. But I can also incorporate the active classroom. I think that's a that's a win. Well, and it's also a real strong win for parents to be able to say, okay, this is precisely what the assignment is. I can see it in active classroom. I can see it in Google classroom because I think this year we've all, you know, it's been the tyranny of the urgent and we've learned as we go, but I finally learned in the second nine weeks to number my assignments by week. So it's like 29.2, 29.3, oh, and we used yeah. Infinite Campus. And I finally mm -hmm. learned, and if you use Infinite Campus, I don't know that you can insert assignments that way. So it just, we've all had to kind of learn on our feet. Yeah. Suzanne, you should be aware that there is a, a, an ability in Active Classroom to, to allow parents to have their own accounts. The parent accounts are uh, parallel to the student account, and it allows the parent to go in and see everything that the student has been assigned, the work that the student's done there, the grades that the students have received. It basically has full functionality except for the ability for parents to actually answer the questions <laughs> for the students. Well, that's good. <laughs> And, We've and had the enough way of that, that they go to too. that, I'm just going to click on my profile up here in the top corner, and uh, the same page that we use to synchronize um, should have, oh, I'm in my student uh, one here, just a second, that doesn't have it, let me go back out to 
So this, so as a teacher, um, I've got the parent registration U URL, and I just give this URL to all the, the parents, and they um, uh, go in. They'll need their students' login and password in order to match up the accounts, and then it goes to the teacher uh, to approve that. So we can't have we don't have random adults going in and connecting themselves to other kids' accounts. So you've got to give permission. Okay. But then the, the, the parents have their own accounts and they have that sort of view um, with whatever's going on. That's fantastic. That's great. You know, and this, they don't have to ask their student, you know, they don't have to ask their, uh, their children for, hey, show me what's happening in your class. Because, you know, how hard that is with preteens and teenagers, the odds of a successful, oh, yeah, mom, sure, let me show you what I'm doing is probably not going to happen. And the parents can pre-teach themselves so that the students don't always think they're smarter than their parents. Ooh, oh, I like that Good. one. Good one. Pre-teach and reteach yourself about <laughs> World War I. <laughs> Excellent. So any other questions? And, you know, we're here. We could go off in another direction if, if you guys are new to Active Classroom. And, um, Andrea, I, I don't think we've even had a training for your district. Did we do a training already for your district? The high school has. We haven't done a full, um, a full district one yet, but we got a little taste of it at the high school um, so that we could – uh, kind of start dabbling a little bit this spring as we're finishing out this um, this school year, getting ready for next school year. Okay, well we'll we'll have the opportunity to come back and visit with you guys in August if you if you want, and um, uh, then we'll have the curriculum maps, and that's really going to help uh, you see how we've sort of paced out your curriculum for you, and it'll make it a lot easier for you to to understand how to use it. But the nice thing about this integration is that even if you're using a curriculum map in Active Classroom to find what do I want to assign to my students next Tuesday, once you make that assignment, it automatically, we didn't have to do anything. Once we said everything can be synchronized, it automatically went over there and it's in their Google Classroom. So you can still use Google as your main sort of organizing place. And then it just pops off the Active for the students to actually do their work. So real quick clarifying question, when you set up that assignment for when it's released, it'll automatically release at that same time to Google Classroom, right? Oh, that's interesting. I don't think that's true, but I'm going to have to test that. I think it'll put the assignment in there, but I think if they clicked on it, that's really interesting, the launch date. I haven't tested that. That's a really good question, Suzanne. I suspect that it'll put it in there regardless of the launch date, but if the students click on it, they'll get a message that they can't access that lesson yet. All right. But thank you for uh, letting me know, and I'll test that, and oh, sure. we'll know more. If you need any testers, just let us know. Okay, good. Well, if there's nothing else, we'll call it a day. I really thank you guys for coming out and learning about this integration. And we're excited to be working with uh, all of your districts. And uh, really, if there's anything more that we can do, uh, my email address is Aaron at socialstudies.com. Uh, feel free to uh, send me a note at any time. It's my job to be here to answer your questions. So really, anything that comes up at any time, A-A-R-O-N at socialstudies.com. Maybe, Melissa, can you put that into the chat? Already done. Oh, already did. And uh, that's it. We're available 24-7 to answer your questions. We sync like Google and Active Classroom. That's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I love it. I wake well, up at 2 in the morning. My phone gives a little, like, you know, it buzzes, and that means, oh, there's an email I've got to answer right away, and I'll do it. <laughs>